Hello everyone, Bruce Wartz here. Thanks so very much for becoming a patron, for supporting the channel. Yeah, you can become a patron now on my new Patreon page. Look at the top in the cover photo while we're zooming into the Apollo 17 landing as we just saw UFO go by. Uh, <laughs> guys, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you guys, this is half as close as I will get in to show you the surface of where the Apollo 17 supposedly landed. We're gonna go see Apollo 11 again quickly but a more detailed view of Apollo 12 and Apollo 14. We're going to zoom in to where they said that the, the declared landing sites were. So it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to get some um, amazing videos up as winter is coming along because we get nice clear footage in the winter here. Hard to believe as cold as it is, still some very good footage that we can get. Mayor Chrissium, the white patch on the left. Um, at one point, you guys are going to know uh, the areas I'm talking about. Oh, I caught a UFO too. We're going to see that going by whatever it may be. Again, the UFOs that I'm showing you all on the surface is not uh, are not the ones that go by between Earth and the Moon. This one, I believe, was uh, between Earth and the Moon. Um, it did look like it was over the Moon, as everything always does. Uh, but I don't. I think. By seeing the size of the object when you see the UFO, you know that it's not something that's on the surface because it's big enough. It would be pretty darn big. So what type of color uh, Apollo 12 and Apollo 14 would have seen on the surface and why would they have supposedly landed where they declared they landed? Let's go take a look at that. We're going to go look at the Apollo 12 first. The Apennine Mountains, just to the left, Eratus Thetis Crater. This is Mons Wolf. Mons Higgins right here in the center on the way down towards the Apollo 15 site here which is beside Mons Hadley. Archimedes crater can be seen right there. Eratus Thenus here. Uh, sorry, Eratosthenes. That's the proper pronunciation. Oh. And um, now we're going to go see a close-up view of the area. Well, close-up view. That's where they would have landed. They said right in that small dark crevice there on the surface, which would have uh, be been under or just beside right there, a mountain of 15,000 feet high. Ouch. That's pretty high, right? We're talking just below Mount Everest high, which is pretty darn high. And that's where it is. Do you see the square on the surface? There we are. There's a rectangle on the surface where Apollo 15 um, would have landed. So this is me now back, the continuation of the audio after yesterday's attack on the police here. Sorry about not posting everyone. Look at the Apollo landings. We're going to try to look at them, all of them, in great detail. And at least knowing where each and every, look at the blue objects. Ooh, blue spots beside some of those landings. Could it be water? I wonder. Apollo 12 landed supposedly, they didn't, beside this crater right here and Apollo 14 right here. So we're looking at views of the surface. No matter where they said that they would have landed, I doubt it, we do see a very colorful surface all the time, no matter where they are. find it fascinating that the color was not mentioned about the moon when the moon is so extremely colorful but then again they had black and white cameras so they say i don't believe they did i'm pretty sure that they would have had this artificial intelligence already working on cameras and you know with color obviously Duh. i don't know like said, that's maybe just my opinion but i do not believe um, that they went up to the moon with uh, an object that was as powerful a computer as a phone you know you have to wonder whether they did or not, but maybe we'll never know. We will. This is Copernicus Crater. Again, we're looking at that bright crater, which is the Apollo 12 landing, right beside the Apollo 14 landing, seeing 
a very beautiful and, and clear surface. I want to thank you all for becoming patrons to help keep this channel up since I'm having so many problems with everything on YouTube. Thanks for the ongoing support. Your comments are therapeutic, guys. I love you all for it. I can't thank you enough. And what's this? That's right. That's something flying by, which... Hey guys, isn't it rare that I catch these? I'll be very honest with you, it sure is because I'm catching them close up to the surface. I love seeing those because whether it be um, a plane, uh, whether it be a bird or a satellite or a UFO, I'll tell you what, the term that we use for all of those when we don't know what they are or able to prove it, they are UFOs. And what you just saw going by was not a plane and it sure as hell was not a duck flying at the speed of light. It was fast, right? Maybe not the speed of light, but we know birds don't fly that fast. And the way a bird appears in a telescope uh, is not the way most of you think it would. Um, I could stand in front of the telescope and I won't even show up if I'm too close. Literally, 250 pounder standing in front of a scope and I'm not even gonna show up. You're gonna see a line in the center or a blur. Here's the UFO close up. That's pretty cool. We saw it well. Let's get another image of that UFO uh, here up a bit slower so we can get a good look at it. And then off to the surface of the moon and I'll get some more videos up for you all. Thank you very much, everyone, and welcome. Thanks for watching everyone. I want you to take note at all the different levels on the surface. This is Mare Imbrium, where the supposed Apollo 11 moon landing would have occurred. But as we're 
crossing over to the left area west of Mare Imbrium. So now we're going west of Mare Imbrium where the supposed Apollo 11 landing would have occurred. Please take note of the octagonal triangular square craters um, with the lines that are going to and from them. Now here's the thing, those of you who don't know, the surface structures, natural or not, that are on the surface are hard to see because there's what we call foreshortening the parallax. It's said to cause an optical illusion and every single elevated structure on the surface would be seen um, laying down like it's crushed down to the surface and offset the foreshortening, the parallax. And that's said to be because there's two celestial objects in motion and I'm taking an image from a moving object on another moving object and apparently that's what's causing the parallax. Who cares, right? There's aliens on the moon. I'll get some music up, guys. Thanks for watching. Before I get some music up, I want to talk a little bit about where we're going. Maybe we should stick without music. Um, <clears throat> yep, you're stuck with my voice for a while. Apollo 17 landing. I showed it pretty close. This is a little closer, but j just wait till we get to the end of the video. We're going to slow it down and get in, I'd say about a quarter closer, maybe half, twice as close as this to get in to really see the surface objects and the way it is the oscillation on the surface and you can see that the oscillation is pressed up close to the surface and you'll understand that the more and more that we zoom into the surface but isn't it an incredible view you're looking at Mons Argeus and that's exactly where the supposed Apollo 17 um, would have landed there when they supposedly landed there they would have supposedly done some tests and have planted some objects or sticks or whatever they had to do in the ground. It is said that by them doing that, they believe that they could have manipulated the surface temperature of the moon. Okay, I'm just shooting that out there because it's what they talked about, but who knows? I'm no scientist, but I, I highly doubt that um, it would change a surface because that would mean a meteor impact would entirely change the, the surface. That's, it's ludicrous, it's ridiculous. With the amount of, um, isn't that incredible guys? Mons Argeus, isn't it magnificent? You see that line and the light source along the line connected at the same time going to this haze or lit area on the surface. Merci, thank you so much for the generous contributions. Love from Canada. Merci d'être ici, Christina. For whatever the reason you'd like to send me something, here is my mailing address. Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem.